Welcome to worship this morning. I'm standing here at the corner of Third and Pine on the steps at First Lutheran Church. It's a joy to have you with us today. We're blessed today to have a young uh, Bryson Guyman reading the gospel. Our new vicar, uh, Katie Nelson, is offering the message. Uh, the vicar and I are offering prayers together as well. Special music is coming from First Lutheran Church this weekend. And again, uh, Pastor Mac Patrick is behind the camera. In today's gospel, we hear that when the disciples face a great storm on the sea, they cry out with fear. And Jesus says, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Amid the storms of life, you and I gather to seek the calm presence of Christ that soothes our fears. And comforting words of scripture, and later today in the refreshing bread and cup of the Eucharist, God grants us peace and sends us forth to be a sign of God's presence to others. We join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ for whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
walking on water. The disciples were just walking, waking up on their boat. They had been out on the water all night. Yawn, stretch. It was so early, the sun wasn't even up yet. Andrew rubbed his eyes and looked into the fog. Hey, he whispered, do you see what I see? Ooh, it's a, it's a ghost, James cried out in fear. The disciples were shaking in their sandals. They were terrified through the fog. They could see it, they could see the outline of a person walking on the water. It was Jesus. Don't be afraid. It's just me, Jesus, said. He waved a friendly hello. If it's really you, Jesus, tell me to walk on water, Peter said bravely. Okay, Jesus shrugged. Come on out, Peter. The water is fine. Oh, Peter swallowed hard. He placed one foot into the water. Plop, it didn't go under. He tried the other foot. Plop. He was standing. He kept his eyes glued on Jesus as he took a few careful steps. He walked faster and faster. Splish, splash. Only his feet were getting wet. Jesus smiled at him. Peter felt the wind blowing on his face. He took his eyes off of Jesus and looked up at the dark clouds. He, he felt afraid. Uh-oh, his ankles were wet. Uh-oh, his knees were wet. Uh-oh, Peter was sinking. Help me, Jesus, save me, he yelled. Jesus reached out his hand and pulled Peter out of the sea. Why did you stop looking at me? Jesus asked, holding tight to his friend. Don't you trust me? The wind stopped. They climbed into the boat full of cheering. Disciples, hooray! This proves it. They said you really are the Son of God. From that day on, the disciples were excited. excited to tell everyone they met about the power of Jesus. Sometimes I like to see the text through the eyes of a child. During my year with young adults in Global Mission, I spent a good amount of time on boats. The center that I worked at, which was similar to a church camp, was right next to the water, and we did a lot of sailing. One day over breakfast, my colleagues and I told the same story that we have for our reading today. 
We were introducing the children to Peter and discussing his role as one of Jesus' disciples, and it simply felt right to share this story with them. After breakfast ended, we went out on the sailboats. I had two girls and one boy in my boat that day, and our introduction of Peter really stuck with them. It was a calm day, so while the sailing wasn't great, we were able to have wonderful conversation. I was excited about this as the children continued to ask good questions about Jesus and the disciples and faith until the little boy asked if he could try walking on water like Peter had. He was sure that he would do better since he had faith and the water being calm was an extra bonus for him. Although I couldn't allow him to exit the boat and attempt walking on water, this boy's faith has stuck with me. His understanding of the story is something that most adults may not consider. When you hear this story, do you actually think about stepping out of a boat to walk on water? I certainly don't. When I think about this text, I wonder what is needed for Jesus to be able to walk on water. Of course, he needs his gifts that he has been given from God, but he, as a man, also needed to take time to care for himself. Before Jesus could walk on water to meet the disciples on the boat, he went up to the mountain by himself. We may see this as a time for Jesus to be with God, because we know from earlier in this gospel that the mountain is a place for encountering God and hearing God's proclamations. However, I think there is more to Jesus' reasoning for going to the mountain alone. Immediately before this text, Jesus loses a dear friend, John the Baptist. He has also spent a great deal of energy by feeding 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish. I wonder if Jesus went to the mountain in order to practice self-care. Jesus is providing an example for us during this difficult time. Yes, there are many things to do. School will be starting soon in a way that it has never been done before. The count tracking the virus is changing every day. Work continues whether you are going into work or working from home. Things keep going. But this text doesn't stop with Jesus' perspective. We also see what the disciples are going through. Largely, we see Peter. As I prepared for this sermon, the insight of Robert H. Smith stuck out to me. In his commentary, he imagines walking on water. The concept of walking seems easy. We do it all the time. Walking can seem effortless. He continues by imagining treading. Now, treading water is more difficult. It takes effort and energy to stay afloat. Perhaps this imagery is more relatable to what Peter was feeling and to us. At first, staying at home sounded easy, like walking. We would have time to do things we had been wanting to do around the house or for ourselves personally. We would have more time to spend with our families and time to simply take a break from our busy lives. But now we see staying at home is more difficult than we first imagined, like treading. We miss seeing those who we don't live with. We miss our normal schedules. We miss the sense of certainty we had before coronavirus created so many unknowns. As the text goes on, we see Peter being scolded for having little faith. This seemed a bit odd to me at first. We all have moments of doubt, and that's okay. In fact, it's what grace is for. So why is Jesus speaking so harshly towards Peter, I wonder? I find the words of Professor Mitzi J. Smith helpful for this question. Smith shares that perhaps we should look at faith differently in this text. Yes, Jesus was upset with Peter when he noticed the winds and begins to sink. Jesus accuses him of doubting and having little faith. 
But maybe sometimes faith is seeing the boat for what it is, a shared experience and the opportunity to lean on one another, to encourage each other in the storm while waiting on God. Peter was eager to leave his shipmates and to join Jesus, rather than to wait for Jesus to join them in the boat. Sometimes we want our miracle at the expense of others who are in the same boat as us. Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter, and they brought, both got into the boat with the other disciples. It is when they are all together with Jesus and the disciples in the boat that the wind calms down. The good news that I hear in this text is that we are all in the same boat. We are not alone as we maneuver the daily changes that coronavirus throws our way. We are encouraged to not only take care of ourselves, but to lean on one another when the treading gets to be too much. Most importantly, we can always count on Jesus to catch us when we try to walk. There is no one here telling us that we cannot step out of the boat. And if we feel our faith is strong and that the water is calm, like the little boy did, we may step out of the boat. And while we may do this from time to time, Jesus will always be there to guide us back to safety. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the well-being of your creation. Protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you, steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is in the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Bless our leaders at every level, local, state, national, and international, as we work together to keep people safe from COVID-19. Walk alongside and bless with your healing the people of Ruit, Lebanon, especially those who are suffering and families who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, Everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish. And support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregations and for the gift of being able to worship in this way. You have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those making hard and important decisions about the start of school. We pray for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace and for our life together. give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.